Today we're taking a look at the most expensive job site saw on the market. With a price tag of nearly $1,600, that puts it almost $1,000 more than many other job site saws that are out there. So not only are we going to take a look at the saw stop today, but we're going to also look at some blades. Blades that will get you more out of your job site saw, no matter what kind of job site saw it is. We're also going to take a quick look at some accessories, jigs and fixtures that will help you get more out of your job site saw and make them a little safer to use. we got a lot to cover, so let's jump into it. The saw stop has a 15 amp, one and a half horsepower motor, which, you know, honestly isn't that great compared to other saws that are out there on the market. It also has a total rip capacity of 24 and a half inches, which again, isn't that great compared to other saws out there on the market. You can kind of see where I'm going with this. Some of the things that saw stop did that were absolutely amazing is the storage on this machine. Blade storage, tool storage, a place to put your push stick, a place to put your fence when you're not using it. The built-in integrated storage for your miter gauge and for the riving knife with the dust shroud on it. Other features on this saw that are interesting and unique are the one-turn blade height adjustment. Now, that's not, I'm not a super big fan of that. It just makes it a little bit tricky to dial in a really accurate height. It's possible, it's just a little tricky to mess with. The thing I do like about this saw is the lever pull blade angle adjustment. It makes it super fast and the micro adjustment they have built in makes it really easy to dial in very accurate angle cuts. Now, the one thing that really turned me off about this saw, and it's one of the most important features on a saw, is the fence. If you look at it, the engineering, on paper, I'm sure it looked really good, but in actual practical use, there's a lot of movement in that fence. And if you adjust it like you would do a typical fence, when you tighten it down, there can be up to a 16th inch of play. Normally, I'd get the calipers out to show you guys, but I don't need to. You can literally physically see the movement. Now, that said, like most saws that have a fence movement, there's a, usually a trick to it that makes it a little bit easier. Where in most cases you would push the fence tight up against the saw before you lock it down to get it to stay solid. In this case, you actually pull the fence away from the saw and then lock it down and that'll keep you pretty accurate. It's just a little annoyance, but you know, for a saw that costs this much, they should have put more engineering into the fence system. That there should no way there should be that much slop. So what do I think about this saw? Well, the finger saving technology is what does it for me. Um, in my shop, we have a lot of people that are novice and just beginners and Maggie uses this and I don't want to see them hurt. So yes, I think it's worth the $1,600. Would I take this to a job site? Mm, probably not. This is probably not a saw I would carry to a job site on a regular basis. I might do it for a job site that had clean power and I'll explain that in a minute. Um, so, or a commercial site where they require some extra safety features. Uh, so with the EM technology, the finger saving technology in here, if you don't have clean power, uh, you can actually do false trips. And that may be the, some of the cases that I've been reading in the forums about false trips, is if you don't have clean power or you're trying to run this off of a generator, those, those changes in frequency on, or the changes in hertz and the frequency on, from the power can actually create false trips on the saw. And that could get expensive really quick. Uh, so this is not probably the first choice I would make taking it to a job site, but in a shop where there's clean power, absolutely, I would choose this over the other saws that are out there on the market just for the safety features alone. I really wish they would have spent a little more time on the fence. Everything else on this saw is either great with the storage or acceptable with its other adjustments. It just doesn't stand out performance-wise above other saws that are out there. So that makes me hesitate a little bit to say it's worth the 1600 until you talk about the finger saving technology and then it becomes that that value point. I'm curious what your thoughts are about the soft stop job site saw. If you've owned one, used one, you know, let me know down in the comment section what your thoughts are. I'd really like to get some feedback from folks out there who have actually had this and used it. And off, to be fair, we've only been using this for about a month now. And I'd like to talk to folks who have been using it for longer periods of time to see if the performance maintains those kind of things. So let me know down in the comments section below. Let's jump into some blade uses that can make a job site saw work better for you and some other accessories that can really help you get more out of your saw and help you stay safer. 
Before we jump into talking about blades, I want to mention that we bought this with our own hard-earned cash. We paid for this, no affiliation. If you're really interested in this saw and you want to spend your hard-earned money on it, I would suggest you go check out some other review videos that are more in-depth. You'll get a little bit more feel for what the saw is. The one caveat to that is I would look for professionals who use equipment every day in their job and who paid for the equipment that they're reviewing. You're gonna get a little bit more honest review than you would otherwise. Now when it comes to blade choice for any saw that's under two horsepower, whether it's a job site saw or a hybrid or even a small cabinet saw, you really wanna start thinking about thin kerf blades. That means the blade is not quite as wide as a standard blade, which is gonna make it a little bit easier to get through some of those more difficult cuts. My favorite two thin kerf blades are the CMT thin kerf and the age thin kerf and I use them in both 40 and 60 tooth. Now 90% of the time you're going to find the age blade in my saw but that's because I'm cutting hardwood, plywood and things that haven't been outside. If I'm doing an outdoor projects where I'm cutting through 2x4s, reclaimed lumber or barn wood, I'm going to throw the CMT blade in my saw because if I do hit a nail or I happen to wreck it, I'm out a lot less money. So the CMT blade is about half the cost of the age blade. Both of these are not super expensive blades by any stretch of the imagination, but they work really well. Now I keep a 40 tooth in my saw most of the time and that does fine for almost all the projects. Unless I get into some fine cabinet work, then I'll bump it up to a 60 tooth. I never go beyond that and I'm always, you're always going to find my saw with a general purpose blade in there. Don't really get into switching out for all kinds of different materials. General purpose, 60 tooth or 40 tooth is always what you're gonna find in my saw. And I highly recommend you check out both of these blades. The CMT is a great all around beat em up blade and the age blade is amazing for cabinet work, trim work, and working with materials from the sawmill. So the first accessory I wanna talk about is one that we actually make and sell. And this is a clamp on in feed for the job site saw. You simply slide it on the job site saw, line it up with the miter sled, and there's a toggle clamp on the bottom that locks it in place. Now what this does is if you're using your miter gauge, this gives you a little extra support so you can cut wider material safely. Also, if you're using jigs and fixtures like this crosscut sled, it also offers you a lot more support so you can get a wider crosscut sled on a small job site saw. So the toggle on this one has a little rubber stopper. We just switched to this for all of our infeeds. So the infeed for the big saw stop and other cabinet saws, and then this one will have a toggle clamp with the rubber stopper on. When the fence system is all the way closed, it'll work on both the right and left side of the saw blade. But when you have it in a full open position, it only works on the right side. So having this extra infeed support is also really nice for when you're doing larger sheet goods. It just gives you that little bit more of surface area, giving you a little bit more control over your sheet material. Now the next accessory I wanna show you isn't necessarily for a job site saw, it works for any table saw. And this is a magnetic micro square. Now the magnet magnetism isn't gonna help you in this case because this is an aluminum bed, um, but it does have this nice little T base on it so it sits very, very nicely up. And all I use this for is getting my blade perfect 90 to the bed of the saw. Really simply raise it up, line that up in between the teeth, and with the micro adjust on this one, it's really easy to get this blade to perfect 90. So having this little square handy and around all the time is really worth it. I'll probably find a place for it in there with the miter gauge. So the next accessory I wanna show you is the miter set. This is the segmented miter set. And all it does is help you set up your miter gauge very accurately. You can use the two pins on the base to go exactly perfect 90. So you know when you're using your miter slide, it's at a perfect 90. It'll also help you set up positions from four segments or a box all the way up to 20 segments. And as long as you have a good stop, you're gonna get very accurate results. Now on a job site, this is really good for complex trim. And it's also very handy for those situations where you just need to bring that miter gauge right back to 90. And I use, that's what I use it for most of the time is just to make sure I'm cutting perfect 90s. If you're one of those folks that are out there hunting for a job site table saw, I hope you found this video useful. These accessories are handy to have. Highly recommend you check them out. Now links for everything that we talked about today will be in the description box. Now to be honest, I'm a little disappointed in the saw stop. I expected a little more out of it for the money. That said, the, the finger saving technology is really what brings it home. And if that's what you're looking for, that's what you want, that's the only saw on the market that has it. 
Also recommend that you guys check out the CMT and the Ace blades if you're, you know, you're, if you're like me, you're just going to throw a general purpose in and use your saw. They're both great blades. The CMT, like I said, is just a great all-around outside beat em up blade. If you're more likely to have a trip, that's the blade you want on your saw. But if you're inside doing the finish work, the Age Blade is going to give you great results and last a little longer. If you want to learn more about the miter set, I've done a full video. I'll put a card up here in the corner for you to click on so you can check out more about the miter set segment and the traditional miter set. Again, if you own one of these or have used one of these at the job site, um, I'd really be interested in your feedback and what that looks like. And if you're thinking about buying one, go check out the comments down in the comments section. Maybe those will help you make a decision on whether you want to you know, really dump that much cash into a job site saw. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.